hello viewers welcome back we are now looking at creating section and this is video number two of chapter four under advanced financial setup for our excel course so let's now move down a little bit within the spreadsheet now we want to move within the spreadsheet we want to move down within the spreadsheet so that we can be able to continue building underneath this income statement because we have so far developed two sections the assumption section and that income statement so that in, the income statement is on is besides is in besides our cell a 15 so that is the section for income statement so we want to build it down below that income statement now what we are going to do we are going to tap the scroll lock key on our keyboard the scroll lock key for those having trouble finding it look in the top right corner of your keyboard for that scroll it is called scroll rock but now the challenge is that some computers don't have it on their keyboard because you may look at the top right corner of your keyboard and you look for that scroll lock and you don't find it so if you find that your 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 scroll rock key is not there on your keyboard it's because there are those that are using we we, we 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 can we can actually have a shortcut that will help us to have that in place for those keyboards that don't have that scroll lock key we can look we can basically have different shortcuts depending those shortcuts are going to depend on the type of computer the type of laptop you are using i'm not sure for those that are using desktop because i'm using a laptop but for those that are using hp laptop and the lenovo laptops the shortcut you are going to use if you don't find because even on my on, on my keyboard i'm not seeing the scroll lock key so what i'm basically using i'm using the this same shortcut it is fn key plus c the fn key is that key that is next to the control key it has capital f so small it is small f and small n fn fn key you place the fn key together with the c just like the way you say control c for copy but now for us to get that scroll scroll lock we have to make sure that we we, we hit the fn plus c and for those that are using Dell laptops, Dell, if you're using Dell, then you have to go by FN plus S or FN plus F6. So hope we are basically communicating because you may look for it and you don't find it. Even uh, just like what I've said, even on my laptop, it's not there. But we need to have that scroll row and what we are basically the reason is why we want that scroll lock um, that's what i'm going to explain because it is very important even though it's not some of these laptops they don't have that rock but at the end of the day it's important for us so fn plus c if you look at my screen here down here you have you have what says scroll lock and when you when you when you put the cursor on that item it is going to read that scroll lock enabled arrow keys will scroll this the worksheet without changing cell selection so that's the scroll key it has been enabled because even when you are here if you press it again f c it will disappear because you are not seeing it here we have only accessibility so f n to have that in place some of them may not be having as I've, as I've said but we've 
we, we have other means how we can be able to access it. So why is it important for us to have that in place? The scroll key, if you tap the scroll key once, like the way we've done, and now, since we, we have the scroll lock in place, if you just come and hit the down arrow, you're seeing, when you do, when you use the down arrow, you will see that now we can see what, we, 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 we can see all the information being displayed. Because the scroll lock helps us to actually adjust, it adjusts the viewpoints of the spreadsheet. So that's why you are seeing when you place the scroll lock once and use the down arrow or the up arrow, you'll be able to see a wider viewpoint without necessarily having those cursors moving using the down arrow or the up arrow. So that's basically the reason as why we are using that scroll, scroll lock. So it's like for those who maybe who, who haven't understood, it's like see our cursor is in in cell A15. When you use the down arrow, it's like we've frozen our cursor to one place. In other words, it's like we've made we've got the different views and at the same time our cursor is not moving and that's what we read from this point that scroll lock enabled arrow keys will scroll the worksheet without changing the cell selection that's what we basically referring to but now you will not see that you will not see that when we as we come down using the down arrow, we are seeing that the first row, in other words, row one, stayed frozen. Since we did the freeze pens in the last lesson, that's what we learned in the last lesson, and we didn't unfreeze that. So, what we are going to do is we are now essentially we are going to do some some building down to the income statement and we are seeing it's much more realistic and in fact this is what you are going to do in a regular basis because having that cell in one place it can help you understand the that whatever i'm doing even from this point it is still those, inform, those income statements are belonging to that same company. In other words, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be making sure that these models we just build on top of each other. And that's what we are going to basically do when building financial models. So what we want to create now after this income statement, what we want to create next Let's first and let's first remove the that scroll lock FC. Once again to remove it. So if you press the down arrow, you will see that it is moving different cells. So what we are going to look at, we are going to have some sections there. We are going to have, we are going to create a new section. But now we are going to create a new section using some of the of the formats because we want to maintain the format the formats that the the formats that we've used the our colors and all that that we've used in the first sections in other words we are going to use those sections that we have already created so we can now go ahead and start using some of these sections because the reason as well we are, we are going to use some of these sections that we've created is because of the nice formats that we had already created, like for the income statement. When you look at the income statement, we have those nice little formattings that we have, these blue colors, all these formattings that we put in, in that income statement, we need to use them for the next section that we want to create. So what now we are going to do, let's just do a copy. 
and what we are going to copy we are going to copy all these cells here so we are going to copy all the things that we have here in our income statement and we go down to the to down after the income statement and we paste all those values that we copied in that starting from row 32 this is where we are going to paste all the information that we are that we've copied from our income statement so we shall do a paste of those rows that we've copied from our income statement so that we can have those nice nice formats that we already put in place so let's now start highlighting these values we are copying everything we highlight across using the shift we highlight going downwards then we go downwards to the net incomes we want to copy everything from that point so let's do a copy Control c now we are copying the whole of the income statement and we are coming to this cell b32 and we are going to paste whatever we have copied from there so we paste everything that we've copied we use Control v to paste so we have that section in place we have those values in place now so let's let's look at what we what we copied let's try to let's try to copy the the income statement because we are just we are only picking out the section we are not picking out the whole income statement here we are depicted the whole income statement but we are, we are since we are just creating a section let's first of all first pick up the that cast that small section that law if that row 15 will first copy that down to row b32 since we are just only taking the section control v for paste now we are now going to change what we are going to do we are going to change this heading here instead of having an income statement we have we can say we have target ibeda let's now go ahead and copy some of the ibeda here we do a copy control c we are copying that word and we want to paste it there now for us that we, what we want to have we want to have targeted ibeda in other words we, we are changing that section from income statement to targeting ibeda so that we can be able to save a little bit of time and we can also try to copy that's why we are going ahead and we are copying the ibeda right here in cell b22 we are copying it and we want to come back to b32 and we paste we paste that word ibeda there but now the challenge is the ibeda you are seeing in cell b 22 is in black font but what we have in cell b32 is in blue font so what are we going to do what we are going to do we are not going to just paste or we are not just going to do a normal paste what we are going to do we are going to have a paste special so we come to to this section of b32 where we are going to paste and now we use the shortcut for paste special it is alt es it takes us to paste special and then we just go down to this point using the down arrow we can now move downwards to this option right here where it says values we are pasting values and then we hit enter we can see that now we've changed the word ibeda it's now in in black because it is now in blue font it has been in black font but since we we did a paste special we've maintained our color or our formats that we have in that section so what we are going to do we are now going to tap the the f two key and the reason as why we are tapping the f2 key is because we want to go inside that cell for for ibeda 
because what we what we want to have there we want to have target ibeda in other words we don't want ibeda alone so we are going to, to move that cursor at, at the beginning so we go to the beginning with the arrow key left arrow now we are at the beginning of that word ibeda it is actually not even a word it is an acronym because it is representing earnings before interest tax depreciation and the amortization it is just an acronym that we use ibeda but now what we want to what we want to have there is we want to go ahead and add the word target target ibeda so that it reads target ibeda or targeted ibeda so since we have the word target in front of that word ibeda we can now we can now move out of that cell and it has saved us time of typing some of those things by typing even that same acronym of ibeda so now what we want to put is we want to we want to make sure that at least we have that label in place so we have the target ibeda there that is our new section that we are creating we are creating that new section basing on the information or using the information that we already created so that we can have consistency in terms of the formatting so now what we want to do we want to put a label so we want to put a label in place here in this law 35 here and the label says we want it to be reading it better highlighted in other words we want to look at if you try to look at some examples where we can be able to save time again because now our main focus is to make sure that at least we save time when we are doing some of these things so if you want to save time by when when we are putting in some label there as ibeda highlighted what we need to do we need to go ahead and grab this label right here for ibeda in cell b2 b22 this one we grab that we copy we do a copy that is control c and then we do a paste in that same cell we do a paste in this cell right here of cell b35 so we do a paste that is control v so we've pasted that there and we've gotten that word ibeda and now what we want to do since that one the one we've copied is in bold we want to make sure that at least that is going to be not bold so we hit the control b to make sure that to to make sure that we unbold that and now we can tap the f f2 key to make sure that we get into that cell right there because it is the cell that we need to to add just so when we are in that cell b35 and we are seeing that it says ibeda but now what we are going to put is we are going to put the word highlighted so that we can have the full word so we use the arrow key the left arrow to move in front of that word ibeda so we type in the word highlighted in that case we are going to have ibeda highlighted so we hit the enter key now we have that highlighted ibeda in place and that's what we wanted to to have in that cell b 35 or in that row 35. So now let's go ahead and also grab some of the number formats because we also need the formats for the highlighted ibeda. So let's go up above and we grab some of the number formats that we have already set up because we did some of these things and we spent a lot of time. So what we are going to do, we are just going to copy from this cell right here we go to maybe cell let's go up 
and we pick maybe from cell let's just pick from this cell here h let's pick from that cell because we have all that information right there so let's pick from that information we copy we do a copy control c from that cell h17 and then go into we're now going to that we are going to go into that row 35 so we paste those values from from f so we paste these values from f all the way to the l so we move from column f this is where we are going to paste those values so we do a paste control v so we first highlight and we can highlight across you can undo that we first highlight then we copy because we want to then we do a control v there we've pasted all the information that we got from that cell what we only needed is not the information that is in there but what we prefer are the formats that's why we copied from only one cell but we want everything spread to the rest of the cells so since we have done we have pasted all the information now what we want to make to make sure that there is zeros in each of these cells we have to make sure that we have zeros because if you copy and these some of these you may get some of these if you paste you may get some of these things but what we have what we want to have there we want to have zeros in those sections so we want to have zeros in those sections from the first one f35 then we, we highlight across and we do a few right control r we need to have zeros there so now we could go ahead and link up the values because what we are picking from this point we are picking the ibeda values so we are we are going ahead to link up the values in the ibeda line from our income statement section so what we are going to do here we put in our cursor there and we just hit the equal sign because we are going to pull the information from our previous sections of the income statement that we created so now what we are going to do we are going to use the keyboard and we use the up arrow to move all the way to the income statement to pick the value for ibeda that is 66,000 or 66 million it is the value that we are going to pull from that income statement all the way down to our highlighted ibeda so we hit enter because we have reached there now we've now seen so what we are going to do we've gotten th that value so we are going to pick all the information from that point so what are we going to do we are going to make sure that at least here we put in all these values we are going to highlight shift right arrow then we highlight across we have highlighted across so we use the control r because these values we are picking them from where we are picking these values from here so the values that we have here for for ibeda they are going to be the same values that we have in that row 35 that's why you are seeing these values are the same so that's what we we wanted we wanted to collect some of those info some of those informations so i've done a control r that is a few right and we've been able to have that information displayed there so that is the way most people would connect things in the model you may find others may prefer to type in those some of those things but we always want to have that information connected within the model and that's the kind of having dynamics having the model a dynamic model in place by connecting each and every information that we have to each other as long as it is related or it is relevant now as you can see if you pop into this cell this first one and then we tap the f2 because we want to go 
in the information, we can see that this, this cell F32 is actually connected to the, to the cell F22. So that F2 is just there for us to, to actually audit our formulas that we've used. So we are seeing that the, the values are actually directly connected to that cell F22. So no problem there. That's what we wanted to do. So what we are going to do next is we are going to jump ahead to the next video. And what we are going to show you is how you can link up a model as well as using things like naming. Because there, we've been linking up cells by cell, a cell by cell. But now I want to look at the other perspective of also linking up the same cells, but at this time, we are going to use naming. In other words, we are going to name those cells. Instead of using the cell itself, we shall, do, we shall use the name range or the name cell. So those are the things that we are going to look at. It is just, although it is not always advised to use naming in a financial model because at some point it becomes hard to audit. But I'm just going to show you the other way. It's not always, in other words, it's not my recommendation that we actually use naming in our financial model. But I just want to show you that there is a way where we can be able to connect using the cell names and we connect up the different cells. It will also give us the same result of having the model dynamic. But the only challenge is that if it comes to audit, if you've connected a cell which is maybe far away from the point from the screen view or what you are seeing on the screen, then it may be hard for you to audit, especially when you are using tracing precedents and dependence and all that. We shall look at those things when we reach there. So let's see you in the next video as we are looking at naming cells.